Okay, so we're going to try and integrate this function here, e to the x cosine x with respect to x from 0 to pi over 2. Now I've drawn a graph of this function here, which crosses the x-axis at minus pi over 2, pi over 2, it will also be 3 pi over 2, and so on. And it will cross the y-axis at the point 1. So we want to calculate this integral from 0 to pi over 2. So we're interested in this part of the graph here. So that's what we're trying to integrate and find the area of this shady region. So e to the x cosine x, we can see here that integration by parts is going to be the way to go. So we've got e to the x is one function and cosine of x is another function. So the integration by parts formula, so I'll just write that there like that. So I'm not going to write the parameters in the formula because we can see what they are. And it applies if you do an integration with or without parameters. So we've got f of x and then g prime of x. So that's what this is our question uh, we're doing here. So then with regards to x, then that equals f of x g of x minus and then another integral and then we've got f prime of x g of x dx just squeeze that in at the bottom there so what we need to do is assign one of these two functions as either f or for g now e and x and cosine of x these if you keep differentiating them they're never going to disappear to zero. Whereas, for example, if you add x squared after the second derivative, uh, that's going to disappear into zero. So x squared becomes 2x, and then 2, and then zero. So which way round do we want to go with this? Well, as these two don't disappear, we could go either way in choosing f and g for either of these functions. So why don't we have a go at both? So... For this side, I'm going to assign f of x equals e to the x, and then my g prime of x equals cosine of x. And then on this side, I'm going to assign f of x equals the cosine of x, and my g prime of x equals e to the x. And then we need to find the corresponding derivative or integrate the derivative on this one. So then we get f prime of x just stays as e to the x. And then my g of x, which is basically the integral of cosine of x, that will then give me sine of x. And on this side, I need to go the other way around. So this time I need f prime of x, so the derivative of cosine, which equals minus sine of x, and then the integral of e to the x, which is still e to the x. So nothing changes there. OK, so let's go straight in and just plug in our formula here. So we've got our integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the x cosine of x so that's our f of x g prime of x as per the formula and then don't forget the with respect to x and this equals so now the first part of the answer we can already see here is f of x g of x so that's e to the x sine of x And that's from 0 to pi over 2. So this time we've got to add in that because that's our parameters. So now we subtract another integral from 0 to pi over 2. Our f prime of x, which is e to the x. And g of x, which is sine of x. OK, so we've now got another integral to do and it's a very similar to this one so we're going to need integration by parts yet again so now let's go straight in there and go f of x is e to the x 
and that will give us f prime of x is also e to the x and then we'll assign our g prime of x will then have to be sine of x and then our g of x is negative cosine of x. Okay, so we've got all this stuff here now, and now we can continue with our integral. So 0 to pi over 2, e to the x cosine x, dx. So now this first part of the answer still stays. So e to the x sine x from 0 to pi over 2, evaluate it at that value. And then we're going to subtract this integral. So when we subtract this integral, very important, just put a nice big bracket because everything in this formula will be affected by this minus sign. So f of x, g of x. So f of x, g of x, that's minus cosine of x, e to the x. So doing the e to the x first, so e to the x cosine of x, not forgetting our minus sign. So now you can see we've got two minuses here. So this is part of our answer, and it's evaluated as here, 0 to pi over 2. And then now we're going to subtract another integral. So minus the integral from 0 to pi over 2, f prime of x, g of x. So that's e to the x. And g of x is minus cosine of x. So that's minus cosine of x dx. And now we can close our bracket. Okay, right, we can tidy this up a little bit now. So our integral here, which we we'll just imagine comes back down, I won't rewrite that, that's fine. So we've got two things evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So I'm going to try and amalgamate these two things together. So we've got e to the x sine of x, and we've got minus, minus e to the x cosine of x. So this will be a plus, and both terms involve e to the x. So I'm going to go e to the x, brackets, sine of x. So that takes care of this first one. And if this is plus and a pl uh, sorry, this plus is from the two minuses, I'm going to add another cosine of x. And that way then, I've not changed anything that's in this term, these two terms here. And this is all evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So that's all good. Actually, I'm going to write that 0 at the front to avoid confusion. And now we're left with another integral here. So I've got two minuses here, which make positive, but I've got another minus here out front. So this is still minus this integral from 0 to pi over 2, e to the x cosine of x dx. Now this is the same as our original question. So if I just write this one in here now like this, bring it back down, so you can see now, what we're trying to do, if I add this integral to both sides, so take the whole thing, so I put that in a bracket, so if I add this integral to both sides, basically this side will be deleted, and I'll end up with 2 times the integral here, which was our original question, and then this one's cancelled. So then that's going to bring us back down to e to the x sine of x plus cosine of x evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 divided by 2. So I just divide this by 2 then that will leave me with our integral from 0 to pi over 2 e to the x cosine of x dx equals this. So now what I need to do now is plug in my values at 0 and pi over 2 and see what it's actually evaluated at. So this then equals, well, at pi over 2, e to the x is e to the pi over 2. 
and then at pi over 2, sine of x is value 1, and cosine of x is 0. So that just gives us a 1, and then it's divided by 2. So that's that. So then subtract these values at 0. So e to the 0, which we know is 1, but I'm going to write the 0 in there so we can see what's happening. And then sine 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1. So these are then uh, multiplied by 1 again, and then divided by 2. So this, we can simplify this up, so we can have 1 half, that's in both. And then we can have e to the pi over 2 minus e to the 0, which is 1. So that's the value of our integral using this side. So I'm just going to write this up the top. In fact, I'm going to keep these bits in here. I'm just going to write our value here, which is 1 half e to the pi over 2 minus 1. So that's our value here. So now I'm going to calculate the integral using this side. So let's take. Okay, so now integration by parts using this side. So we've got our integral f of x g prime of x. So as before, 0 to pi over 2, e to the x cosine of x dx equals, and then into our formula, f of x g of x equals e to the x cosine of x. And again, that's from 0 to pi over 2. And then we get another integral, keeping our parameters, this time f prime of x g of x, which is minus sine of x e of x. So minus e to the x sine of x. I'm going to write it like this. OK, so now we're going to have another integration by parts situation. And so this time we've got e to the x and sine of x. Now, just to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to eradicate these two minuses and turn it into a positive. So if I take that out and put that there, then nothing has changed in terms of value. So now what I need to do now is do the integration by parts bit, like we did here, for this integral here. This part is still part of the answer. So f of x equals sine of x g prime of x equals e to the x, which gives g to the x equals e to the x, and our f prime of x, while our derivative of sine is cosine. OK, so now let's continue with this solution here. So this stays, that's part of the answer, so that won't change. That's from 0 to pi over 2. And now positive sign. And now what we're going to do is open big brackets and then we're going to plug in the value of this solution to an integration by parts. So we've got f of x g of x, which is e to the x sine of x. And then subtract the integral 0 to pi over 2. Not forgetting that this is evaluated at those same parameters as well. Easy to forget. f prime of x g of x, which is cosine of x, and e to the x. So minus e to the x cosine of x dx. OK, close off the bracket. Bearing in mind this is not to do with what we're trying to do here. OK, let's simplify this off. So we've got e to the x cosine of x. Now can, again I can just simplify this off a little bit so I can just open my bracket here so e to the x cosine of x and then e to the x sine of x so if I just add sine of x here it makes my life a lot easier. e to the x cosine of x, e to the x sine of x which is what we've got here. Evaluated 0 to pi over 2 and now, a little bit easier this time, we've got a plus and a minus, so we've just got a minus. 
So our integral 0 to pi over 2 e to the x cosine of x dx. Now bring this down here. So we're going to need this just to see how we can eradicate. So cosine of x dx. So now we've got the integral on both sides, this time with a minus sign, this time with a positive side, positive sign. So all I need to do now is add this integral to both sides. So then I will get 2 times 0 to pi over 2 e to the x cosine of x dx and e to the x cosine of x plus sine of x. 0 to pi over 2, and then this will be cancelled out because I've added this to both sides. So now what we'll need to do now is just divide by 2, and then just divide this by 2. And as we did before, we're going to get the same answer, which is 1 half e to the pi over 2 minus 1. And that's the area of this shaded part of the graph. Okay, so there we go. So that's an integration by parts. Um, well, lots of it going on there. So we can see how many times you can do sometimes just to find the solution to one answer. And um, yeah, check the link below and you'll see how we're going to graph this in a later video.